The following is a special presentation of 710 ESPN Seattle and 710sports.com. Live from Lucky Strike in Bellevue, this is Seahawks Weekly, presented by Bud Light and also by Pop Chips. Each Thursday night, we take you inside the Seahawks like no one else can. Seahawks Weekly is on 710 ESPN Seattle and 710sports.com. We are back at Seahawks Weekly. We are coming from Lucky Strike in Bellevue Square. We've got a good contingent of the 12th man that's here to give a welcome to Luke Wilson. Tight end, rookie from Rice, fifth round draft pick, Dave Wyman and Max Strong. I'm Danny O'Neill here on Seahawks Weekly, presented by Bud Light and Pop Chips from Lucky Strike. And Luke, how was that on Sunday night? Prime time, national television. You get the lightning delay, everything happens. A, a, a world record for crowd noise. What was it like to be there for that? I mean, what an incredible experience, especially my first uh, regular season game at CenturyLink. Uh, I mean, you can't, you can't even put into words kind of that experience as a player. I mean, just the noise. And I was actually talking to my parents the other day and telling them what was incredible. I, I had heard it was going to be that loud. And, um, but I couldn't believe how long the fans were that loud for. Like, it'd be second and seven, and they were, everyone's standing up. And, now you know, we were in the locker room, and after the lightning delay as well, I was like, oh, you know, I'm sure it'll still be loud, but, you know, it's a lightning delay. And I, it was actually, I think the loudest point was after the lightning delay. So, uh, you know, the, kind of my first real regular season game experience with the 12th man was pretty incredible. You know what that's a testament to, right? That the, it was loudest after? It's the healing power of beer. <laughs> so, it's funny because I talked to a fan and that's what he told me. He's like, yeah, we all just went to the concourse and started drinking. I was like, well, I guess it worked out in our favor then. Yeah, it did not. It did, <laughs> so, the vendors did not suffer for that hour delay. Yeah. yeah Look, are, so. you, are you telling me it wasn't that loud down at Rice? At Rice uh, University? <laughs> Not quite, not quite. You know, Rice, uh, we, one, we didn't really get the, the big crowds, but then two, our stadium actually uh, had a Super Bowl there. Yes. So it seats about 70,000, and when you only get about 15 out a game, it makes it seem <laughs> like empty. this. That's right. <laughs> so it was uh, pretty quiet. You know, we always joke. I had a, actually a former player, my college roommate, was in town uh, for the 49ers game, and he told me, he's like, you know, I remember being able to hear my mom in the stands during the Rice games. Yeah. And <laughs> right. He said it was his first game at CenturyLink, too, and he, uh, he was, was pretty shocked. Yeah, so. it's not good when you can hear people screaming <laughs> at you, you know, from, from the stands. But how did you make your way down to Rice? From uh, Whereabouts in Canada are you from? Uh, I was born in Windsor, Ontario, which is just across the border from Detroit, Michigan. And uh, so it was kind of one of those things, you know, Grew up pretty uh, regular kid in Canada. Uh, I was actually more of a hockey baseball guy growing up. I got two older brothers that kind of went the football route, and I was one of those kids who, you know, always wanted to do what the, their older brothers did. So I uh, ended up getting into football. I uh, went to a couple camps, and Rice had a, had a coach who played um, in the CFL and would come up there and kind of look for some talent here and there and found me there. And luckily, uh, Canadian high school football is pretty poor. But there's a, another league in the summer that's kind of like an all-district team, the OVFL, and the, my hometown was the Essex Ravens. Uh, kind of sent that film in, and it was able to, uh, they liked it, and kind of things took off from there. Uh, one of the greatest assets that you have is just your speed. I, I've been very impressed with watching you stretch the field and where you can get that. What, where did that come from? Did you, were you in track, or what you did know, you do? Uh, I've always kind of been a, uh, you know, I think kind of deceivingly fast for my size, and then... Uh, I always felt like I, I ran pretty good, and I went down to uh, Florida after the season and kind of uh, with a, a, a place called Athletic Edge Sports, a guy named Mike Goff, and we kind of cleaned up some spring technique, you know, built some strength, and I, I've really tried to focus my last few years on flexibility because, you know, sometimes football, you get in the weight room too much, you get a little tight. So uh, I kind of credit my speed to really a kind of a combination of things, but the main one would be kind of the flexibility and kind of loosening up and like I said, I've always felt like I could run pretty fast, so I guess I was born with it in a way. Are you guys doing the yoga down there at the VMAC? I have been, and uh, it's a struggle, I'll be honest. I, I say flexibility, but I'm still not the most flexible guy around, so you can imagine, you know, if you had any cameras in there, you'd get a pretty good laugh at me. <laughs> Did you, you know, do Mac, Mac is actually a yoga master. That's what I was going to ask. Uh, <laughs> I mean, look, you get out there and do some yoga, Mac? Oh, man. I, I, no, I did do some yoga. I did it for about five years while I was playing. And it did help me a lot. Flexibility yeah. helped me with 
just being strong and core in my core and just uh, my increased speed and I, I think you're gonna say five minutes <laughs> <laughs> five years <laughs> Now, that was good. Now, Dave, have you done yoga? Because you strike me as someone you put on your healing crystal, maybe maybe rub some some of the patchouli on. Like, yeah, you, you do. Can I do look some... like I do uh, yoga, Danny? Uh, no, uh, absolutely. Look at, look at the look on my face. <laughs> <laughs> this is radio, Dave. That is terrible for the radio. Okay, now, but I'm you understand? Like, uh, yeah, I do. I do. I'm actually withering in, in, beneath your glare right now. Uh, I'm going to need to let you in on a secret though, because Luke is kind of slow playing you here, and he's making it. I just followed my brothers and what they like to do. Luke was a heck of a baseball player. Luke played junior national team in Canada, is that correct? I did, yeah. Did you have opportunities to go on? Did you face a choice about which sport and why did you choose football when that's probably not the natural path for a lot of kids from Canada? Uh, you know, coming out, I was, I kind of took hockey the most serious out of the three sports as a, as a young kid. And um, as I got older, you know, I, I, I really started to kind of change almost to kind of go to the baseball route, baseball, football. And after the junior national team, uh, had been approached by quite a few baseball teams, you know, sign as a free agent or kind of commit uh, to them and maybe I'd possibly be drafted. But uh, I had already committed to Rice, and like I said, it was just something about football that I just really loved. And, uh, you know, I was planning on going to Rice to do both. I ended up just kind of going the straight football route. But it was kind of nice because I ended up last summer, I was uh, in the minor leagues, uh, just extended spring for the Toronto Blue Jays for a little bit. And that was a pretty cool experience, just, you know, especially being from Canada, being able to play for the Blue Jays uh, was, was pretty neat. Now, Luke, I, after camp ended, because I, I was out there for a lot of the practices, I thought you were the most improved player. I, I thought, you know, coming in, you know, it's hard as a rookie, you know, and one of the things you got to learn is to stay low. And I noticed in the beginning playing a little high, but man, by the end of camp, you really got down low, became a great blocker. And then well, the thing I hear from the coaches is that you don't know how fast you are. Now, have you heard that at all? Because I think that they, you know, the, the coaches, and I remember listening to Schneider when you were drafted, they think you're a guy that can really stretch the field. Yeah, you know, and I think part of it was maybe in college, you know, going to a smaller D1 school like Rice, you, you get away with a lot of maybe technical things, like you said, maybe being a little high just because you're playing, you're not playing NFL sure. players every down, right. or not like you're in the SEC. So there definitely was a big learning curve for me coming through OTAs and, and uh going into camp but like you said that was a kind of a major issue for me was in my blocking I got away with a lot of things in college do uh blocking wise kind of being high just because I felt like I could overpower a lot of guys but not too many guys in the NFL you can overpower so uh and as far as the speed thing goes um I, I guess I, I've actually heard that quite a few times and just the way our college offense was run we really didn't utilize tight end speed a lot so it was one of those things where you know, when I, I ended up running the 40 on Pro Day, everyone was shocked. And I, I was kind of like, I mean, I, I've always been able to run pretty fast, but we, I mean, we just don't have any plays to, uh, that I'm really running, if that makes sense. So, uh, what was your 40 time when they timed you there? The, on NFL.com, they, the hand times, I think one they said was a 454, and the other one was a 446. Wow. So they ran it off. Take the 446. Right. <laughs> From now on, when anybody yeah. asks you, just say the 446. Four, yeah, that's right. So I think that's they get the median in there at 451, and that's kind of... So I kind of get a little annoyed, though, whenever it's like, yeah, he's a 45. I was like, well... Uh. <laughs> 446 right there, baby. <laughs> so yeah. has that been the hardest thing for you, transitioning? I mean, going from a smaller school, come to a big time, not just the NFL, but a, a, coming to a team with the highest of expectations going to the Super Bowl. What, what's been kind of the hardest thing for you to get adjusted to? Has it been film study? Has it been just the grind? The hour? What, is it, what has it been for you? You know what, believe it or not, and this may sound uh, kind of a little dense almost, but the hardest part for me has been, or was, it's really not anymore, was actually getting in the huddle, hearing the play call, and going out and executing it. And what I mean by that is in college we were no huddle offense. So I hadn't been in a huddle since high school, and that's a Canadian high school we're talking about. Right. And we were pretty, uh, like, we we're at Rice, we were really a simple offense. You know, I'd look over, I'd get the couple signals, and I'd pretty much be on my way. And all of a sudden, you're in that huddle, and, I mean, the plays call it go fast, and they can get pretty complicated. And, you know, depending on the formation and the position I was playing, I was doing a lot of adjusting based on different formations. So just being able to kind of be confident in what I was doing with the complexities of the offense and then executing it like at full speed and, and, and playing almost free in a way was uh, probably the biggest adjustment. And like you said, when you start thinking, 
But that's kind of when you get situations where you get high on blocks or you know you're short on routes. Well, when you're real comfortable, you're like, all right, you can kind of think, all right, technique here, I'm going to attack this. Like getting more minute details of the play rather than just what exactly you're supposed to be doing. We're here at Seahawks Weekly. We're joined by Luke Wilson, rookie tight end for the Seattle Seahawks. You can listen to the Seahawks take on the Jacksonville Jaguars this Sunday. Pre-game starts at 10. Kickoff at 125 on 710 ESPN Seattle. And I want to go. We have, we, have, we have three former, two former players, one current player, and get a welcome to the NFL moment. And I'm going to start. Now, now, you guys might not know that I did have a welcome to the NFL moment. And it was when I walked in for the first time as a reporter, and I was trying to wait patiently for Steve Hutchinson, who is the grumpiest human ever, to, to answer a question. I was standing behind him politely, patiently. I've got my little notebook out. And, and then he turned around, put his back to me, took off his underwear, and then threw them backwards, like <laughs> right by me. And I was like, whoa. So that was my welcome to the NFL moment. Now, Dave... Wait, what was the moment when you knew wow. that you I don't were know if somewhere I can, else? I don't know if I could top that one. Dirty undies being thrown at you by we, Steve Hutchinson? We can stop with that one, man. That was, <laughs> yeah. that was great. That's great stuff right That's there. That's the end of that segment. Uh, you know, what Luke was just talking about, coming from college into the pros, you could just do whatever you wanted in college. You just go out and play. You don't think about, you know, being you know low and, and having your feet here and there. There was a guy named Alvin Powell who was a guard that was uh, 300 pounds. And when I played at Stanford, the center from San Jose State weighed 245 pounds. And so, you know, I would just ragdoll him. But this guy, and I'd never heard of him, and he kicked my butt bad. And so that was kind of my, and I'd never even heard of him. And he was from like Valdosta State or someplace like that. So, you know, that's the, the moment when I realized everybody here is really, really good. Even the guys, and this wasn't even a guy I'd heard of. You know, so plenty of those. And actually, I had more than my share. I was like yearly, I had a welcome to the NFL moment. But that was it usually involved a very large offensive lineman. Now, for, for you, Mac, because you come out here from Georgia, they play a fairly high degree of football down in the southeast, the SEC, and getting up here. Did you have a moment where you're like, whoa, this is, this is a step up? Yeah, it was when we uh, had a preseason game against the San Francisco 49ers, and I had Steve Young and Jerry Rice and... You know, just all, all the all the greats, you know, guys I've grown up watching on TV. And uh, it was just hard for me not to just, you know, plan whether I was out there in the, in the offensive huddle or whatever, just not staring at people like, wow, man, there's Steve Young right there. There's there's, there's Jerry Rice on the sideline. And then, uh, then right about that time, Bill Romanowski hit me. And, he, <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I'm a 38, I'm going to hit you so hard, I'm going to give you, your kids a headache. <laughs> and uh, I was like, man, that's not nice, you know. Uh, I'm just, <laughs> just trying to earn a job out here. But, yeah, it was just one of those moments where it's like, okay, don't get starstruck. You know, this, you're, you're, you're in the league now. Do your job. Now, we've heard from, t from, from two guys who've earned their stripes. Have you had that moment yet where either, either you get knocked on your keister or, or just that you realize that, wow, this is, this is, this is a whole different level? Yeah, um, actually... The uh, first preseason game, uh, this is a bit embarrassing, but uh, we end up, I think it might have been the first or second play of the game. Uh, I was kind of going in motion. I saw my motion just outside the tackle, and I was supposed to kind of have that, I guess they call it a Leo, uh, w whatever the term is. But uh, and he was basically supposed to sit there as I motioned over because I wasn't really extending my motion. And as I motioned over, he just starts widening out, and I'm like, I don't really know why he's doing that because, again, it was a little unconventional. And uh, he was probably about six or seven yards away from me when I had stopped my motion. And, then, and again, I was like, oh, that's supposed to be my man. But, like, he's kind of taking himself out of the play. So I'm going to, again, kind of rookie moment where I wasn't really playing full speed. So I'm like, you know, I'm going to check him. But if he bails in sort of some sort of coverage, I thought maybe they had some sort of blitz come from the other side. Uh, I'm just going to work up. You know, we had a nice, simple run play. We snap the ball, and I'm just kind of glancing over at him, and he literally takes a full charge right at me, and I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> and uh, again, I was kind of thinking he would just bail out, and I would be on to the next guy. And uh, you know what? I, it, may, it might not have looked bad, but I took a pretty good shot to the chin. Yeah. He may have slid off and made the tackle. <laughs> uh, may or may not. I, you know, <laughs> I, I took the walk of shame back yeah. to the huddle. Yeah. But, you know, it was kind of one of those things, too, where it, uh, you know, at this at this level, I mean, everyone's coming with it pretty hard. There's not any. Uh, you know, in college, you had the odd guy that would would bring the bring his hat, and but at this level, everyone it's a pretty big hitter. So even in the locker room, when they're throwing dirty undies at you, I guess. You know? <laughs> wow, that's a yeah. that's a new low, Danny. That one. 
and, and that would have been a jock strap. Yeah, yeah. Lucky that didn't land on your head right there, man. Yeah, That's was good. it like a day, player day off and it was regular underwear or was it a no, workout clothes? No, it was the compression shorts. It was, a, it was okay. well, that, Yeah, that's was, a little was, better. Just, yeah. Well, I had a, a veteran tell me, and actually he's the linebacker coach for the Steelers now, Keith Butler. And uh, he was a guy I learned probably as much football from as, as anybody. And he used to always say, if you haven't been knocked on your butt in this league, you haven't been playing very long. So, I mean, that, that's going to happen and those kinds of things. As long as you, uh, you win more than you lose. And it looks like uh, every time I see a guy like this, I'm like, man, I'm glad I'm not playing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, 6'7", you know, can run. And so, anyway, you, I, I think you're doing great, Luke. And uh, just that improvement to me is the most impressive thing, uh, what you did during camp. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. I got it's kind of my mentality is to come in and get better every day. And from day one of camp to now, I can tell you honestly, I feel a hundred times more comfortable just in the offense. Uh, you know what we're trying to accomplish as an offense. You know, and uh, it's been like I said, every day I'm just trying to get better every day. Uh, 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 everybody's embraced you, even at being a rookie. There's no hazing or any of that kind of stuff. Or have you had kind of one of those moments where guys put did something to you, put something in your locker. I'm a little, I'm a little hesitant to say this <laughs> on the radio because I hope, I hope Zach Miller's not listening. <laughs> you, can, but, you can do it. But believe it or not, he's been relatively easy on me. He's a really good guy. You know, I mean, the odd thing here or there, carrying pads, you know, I get run on away games. I get like Chipotle before we get on the bus to the plane. But I see the old lineman. I'm, you know, I'm pretty good buddies with uh, Ryan Seymour and the O linemen, I mean, they're 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 pretty ruthless on the on the young O linemen. The four rookie O linemen, uh, you know, they're uh, doing a lot of chores, and I'm just kind of hiding in the background, you know, pretending no one sees me. But uh, like I said, I'll I'll be honest, and I hope he's not listening because if he is, he'll probably be upset, and I'll have a bunch of stuff to do on uh, <laughs> tomorrow morning. But uh, I haven't had anything too crazy yet. But again, I, I I'm still I'm treading I'm. It's coming. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm being sure careful. All right, I'm, uh, we got my head on a swivel. We interviewed Sidney Rice today. He had one of the best ones. He has on those, uh, I get these, my wife gets them for me every Christmas, these Ugg slippers. Yeah, they made. They make the rookies get them Ugg slippers. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's okay. really nice. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, I mean, so I think the Chris Harper, when he was here, had to get about, I want to say seven or eight pairs of Uggs for the uh, veteran wide receivers. Those things ain't cheap either, are they? No, they're not. <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, Zach didn't ask me for any, so I'll just uh, <laughs> this guy's buy my own, my own business over here. <laughs> Man, what's Chipotle go for, like 10 bucks? I mean, you're getting off easy. Yeah. I'm going to have to go talk to Zach. Hey, you know, come the, on now. <laughs> the, re the reality is Zach is quite distracted. His wife, J they had twins, oh. and I think they're less than a year old. I think they're about seven or eight months right now, so I think Zach is just happy to get there in the morning. Now, he's going to be cranky, happy. though. He's going to be cranky, so watch He's going to have you come over and change his kid's diapers. <laughs> 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 Now, see, that now that's a, you should be throwing Luke under the bus. I'm just like throwing that. out ideas, that's all. <laughs> and, then and then throw the diapers at Danny O'Neill. Yeah. <laughs> a new low. I, I, I passed all that. No longer. Uh, did Seymour, if you're friends with Seymour, now I noticed this. In He's the, here now. Be careful. He's over there. Was that, He's got the mullet. Did, that's what it, was that his choice? Did he choose that hairstyle? Oh, it, definitely. Definitely. With the stripes on the side? Yeah. Because I noticed that today when I was in there. It looks and like, and you know what? The linemen are cleaning them up today. It looks even better today. <laughs> yeah, you know. He's been it making improvements on Now, I was trying to talk Moffitt for a, a good year and a half that he really wanted a mullet. And I knew that I wanted the mullet for him. Yeah. And he never did it. So I'm glad that Ryan Seymour is carrying oh, he, on. He There's a couple it. stripes in it, too. Yeah, yeah no, it's it's pretty, uh, it's done up nicely, even today. I think he might have a little product in, in there today. <laughs> kind of I, looks, I mean, I could be wrong, but maybe. Kind of looks like the boss from here, <laughs> a little bit. Hey. Now, you were teammates with the boss. Yes. What was it like to be teammates with the boss when he arrived here as a rookie? This is probably a decidedly more dramatic entrance than Luke Wilson here. <laughs> from the yeah. Well, he fifth rounder out of Rice. He arrived in a helicopter, so <laughs> and he was my roommate. And then people would all people would come knocking on the door looking for Brian, you know. And so he was a good guy. I mean, Brian Bosworth was a good guy. The boss was a whole different persona. So. You know, and I'm not sure if you guys have anybody like that on this team, guys that, I mean, everybody seems pretty down to earth, yeah. you know, as far as, but Brian was like a big time wrestler, you know, the boss. I mean, he, it was like an image that he created. Anybody close to that uh, uh, on you, your team at all? I mean, I don't know, maybe to that extent, because I mean, even being 
I mean, I don't really remember watching the Boz, but, you know, hear all the stories and stuff. But for the most part, I mean, anyone, I, mean, I know in the off season, like, we were catching some heat here and there, or, you know, I remember Coach Harbaugh had said something about us in the media. But, I mean, there's a lot of guys, and guys maybe people wouldn't expect to do a lot of work in the community and uh, are just, I mean, really good, genuine people. You know, you see them on the field or you see, again, like what they say here and there about about games and you try and kind of, some people would assume that's what they're like in everyday life. But just like you said, I mean, I haven't, a lot of the, the big time players are just really great guys. Good. Now, Luke, your first impressions, you heard what the 12th man was going to be like. You heard about the 12th man and now you've experienced the 12th man. How did it match up to what people described what it was going to be like to play at CenturyLink Field? Honestly, they had described it pretty close, but until you actually experience it, you can't really have any, um, I, I don't even know what the, the word I'm looking for. You can't really, help me out here, guys. You Imagine? Yeah, yeah, I mean, you can't, I guess, you, until you actually experience it, you don't understand, in a no. way. Uh, just, like I said, I mean, everyone I had spoke to, like, yeah, it's going to be loud, like, it's going to be crazy, These people are, are real intense, and you know, X, Y, and Z, and I'm like, yeah, like, I can't wait, I can't wait, and then it was like, like I said, that was my expectation, and you get out there, and you hear the noise, like, the record-breaking noise, and you're literally, like, your mouth drops, you're like, oh, my goodness, like, it's unbelievable, the rain delay doesn't stop the 12s, like, oh, we're up by 20 points in a second seven, and they're still going crazy, you know, it's, it was pretty, it was, especially coming from a school like Rice, I mean, I was by far the best atmosphere I've ever played in, and to have that home field advantage, and especially for a rookie, I was telling someone this the other day, you don't realize if you're unsure or not like completely comfortable at all about anything, that noise really does make a difference, especially that split second kind of getting off the ball. When you're tight end, you're on the end of that line, just having to peek in there to see the ball snap instead of being like, all right, I can hear the quarterback fine, I know what I'm doing. I'm telling you, I... I Anyone who tells you the noise doesn't make a difference is a liar, all right? <laughs> so, uh, I, like I said, it was just a unique experience, and I can't, I can't wait for this Sunday. So, Luke, I want to know from you from a rookie's perspective. I know uh, Pete has his mantra, always compete, and I know the older guys have been doing it for a while. What has it been like for you as a rookie to come in and, and to have that sort of put on you, like we, we compete every day around here in practice, in games? film everything we do is about competition you know at first and this kind of went back to camp and just adjusting it was a challenge just because it's not how we really did things at rice i'm not saying we didn't compete at rice but not to this extent whatsoever and uh you know just the entire atmosphere and the entire attitude of how we approach practice film i mean before meetings we'll have shoot offs on a little basketball net okay <laughs> and it'll be a competition you know so it's one of those things where uh, you really got to be focused in for a long period of time and you really got to be prepared to compete at the highest level every moment of every day. And as a rookie, like I said, you kind of come in, you're not really sure what to expect. And because uh, if you're not going to be competing at a high level, everyone else around you is and it's going to make you look terrible. Oh. So that's kind of been the biggest adjustment. And you went, like I said, just little things like that, like the mentality of how you approach every day can really be a huge difference so well the 12th man is here to welcome in a new rookie i know you you, you've got people here that came from oregon that would be patricia and ernie who came up here they came up here for the game on sunday staying for the game next sunday sweet everybody giving a welcome to rookie luke wilson thank you so much for taking the time to join us here on seahawks weekly thanks for having me i appreciate it